Hi again. In this exercise, we're going to be looking at some of the more advanced layering techniques that we have with inside DFX. I also want to show you one other thing. If we come into open, we can process raw files directly within DFX. Here I am opening up a Canon CR2 file and we get our raw import module up here. So we have a load of options that are available to us only within raw. So we can come in and change the exposure. We can also change the color temperature very easily. Here, here I am going to make it slightly bit warmer. Um, I can come in and change my vibrance and saturation. And this is all within the raw file itself. So we hit OK, and then DFX is going to come in, process that raw up for me, and I can start my proper work. Now if we look up at our image menu up here, we can be working either 8 bits or 16 bits per channel. And this can give us some finer results, especially if we're seeing any sort of banding going on within our image itself. Now the option to work in 8 bits per channel is purely there to help speed us up. And so the preview that we're going to be seeing is processed in 8 bits per channel. But when we save out our final footage, that's going to be processed up in 16 bits. Now the idea behind this shot is I want to create a bit more of an early morning feel for this. So I want to have our um, background a little bit more diffuse. I want to change the colors up a little bit. And then, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes from there. So the first thing I want to do is come in and add a bit more diffusion to this. So let's come into our special effects and let's come over to fog. Now I really like this effect, but actually for, for what we're doing here, it's probably a little bit too much. So I want to come in and start to mask this off a little bit. So if I come up to my mask tools over here, I can come in and use my gradient, my spot, my path, the easy mask, but let's take a selection here and let's move over to our show mask button here and we get a chance to look at what it is we're actually going to be doing. So wherever anything's white, we're going to be leaving the effect in. Wherever it's black, we're going to be leaving the effect out. And greys are obviously going to be partially affected. So up here, we can come in and use the drop down menu to check out the different color channels. So we can either base it on luminance, a certain hue, saturation, or any of the color channels, red, green, and blue, or cyan, magenta, and yellow. Now, as I want to affect the sky, blue is probably a good place to be starting. And I can come over and start to change the position of where our mats uh, starts to take effect. And I can adjust the range. If I adjust the range down, it's only going to be very limited to this area here. And if I adjust the range out, it's going to slowly start to take in more of the image. So let's uh, take it around about 33 there. I can also come in, I can clip my blacks and my whites here so that I get a more solid matte. So it's either black or white. Now, if I turn the show mask off now, we can see we're only affecting the sky here, but that doesn't quite give me the effect that I want. It doesn't quite give us that sort of diffusion going around the buildings. So I can always come over here to my blur and I can start to blur up that mask. Now as I blur this up, you can start to see the mask changing here. And as it changes, we're getting in a bit more of those edges. And I can decide whether we have a inner blur. So we're only blurring inwards. We blur center, so we blur both inwards and outwards, or just outwards here. And this gives us the effect that I actually want. So we've got a great diffusion coming in, hitting this area over here, but leaving most of the rest of the image untouched. So if I start to bring in another layer up here, start to change the colors on the rest of the building. Uh, for example, let's come in and do a two strip and let's take two strip number one, for example. I can take this mask here just by dragging and dropping and I've duplicated that mask from one layer to the next one. And I can come in, I can start to change this up using this just as the basis. So for example, I can come in and just invert my mask. I can also come in and take the blur off of it. I might keep a small amount of blur on there just, uh, just to smooth things out a little bit. But now if I use the view compare button to see a before and after, we can see we've got a great difference going on already. And if I think this effect is slightly too much, I can always come back and mix it back in with the original, taking that down to 84%. And just to add a couple of uh, finishing touches, let's add another layer up here. 
uh, come into my film stocks over here and let's find another nice black and white film here we'll just stick with the Agfa APX 100 come on and set my blend mode on this layer now to soft light again start to pull this back slightly so this is great for adding some more shadows coming in here really starting to give me that nice early morning feel again we hit just the view compare button down here to look at the before and after with the original image and we can really start to see that actually this is much more early morning than the original shot was so if i come into my parameters tab down here i can come down and change the grain size up in the film stocks filter or i can add another layer coming in here and add a grain effect solely on this layer and if i take just like a maybe just a quite a small effect 25 ASA there and just zoom in slightly we can see that I can also mix this back to my heart's content so if I hit F to fit the image back to the window size and look at my original we can see we've made that difference that I wanted to do so you can see just how easy it is to build up multiple layers worth of filters, to blend them together using mats and masks, and to copy masks from one layer to another, but also to use the layer blend mode and the layer opacity to get some truly unique effects.